Hey, what's happening everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In today's tutorial, I wanna talk about forms and how to build a form using Gatsby. I have a form here I built on my other site, Nautilus Designs, my design company, which you can find at nautilusdesigns.com slash contact, has a first name, a last name, an email address, a phone, and how can we help you online? I also put a button as well. Now I am going to use React Bootstrap for this, and I actually built a template that combines the Gathcarder template with the React Bootstrap. It looks like this, it looks amazing. Whenever I build things in Gatsby, I like to have a basic default starter. So with this design, I just stripped out all the design elements inside of Gatsby's starter default library, and I also installed, if we go back here, the React Bootstrap component as well. We're gonna focus on the forms, which are prevalent and present in React Bootstrap. And with that, let's get started. All right, welcome back. Once again, my name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. And if you've watched the videos before, you know that I am a big fanatic of React Bootstrap, the chocolate, or as they call it, the not vanilla version of Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a framework for design that I think really gives you a great starting point in which to work off of. And even just building the basic forms are really successful out of the gate using React Bootstrap. Now I have a template that I built and it looks like this. It's like, hey, starter template, React Bootstrap. The only thing I changed from the Gatsby default starter library, if we go into my project, in my layout, they already have a default starter CSS file. I already installed the Bootstrap CSS, and then I made my own custom CSS. That's all I really did to change the actual layout, and the index just stripped out any of the extra design pieces I did leave the image there that was previously designed by Gatsby. I named the astronaut Jeff if you've watched a few videos beforehand. So what I want to do next is I actually want to bring in and actually build a form. So with that, let's actually do a couple things. So what I do at the top is to start out my form design, I have to bring it in from React Bootstrap. So I'm going to say import and then in my curly brackets, not the P, how about the curly brackets, I'm going to say form as that's the element that I have to bring in and it's from React Bootstrap. Boom. Now of course what I love about also using React and especially Gatsby is it says hey you've, you've written this but it's not really declared. So down here I'm going to put it below Mr. Jeffrey the astronaut and I'm going to say form because I first have to declare my form where it is and what it's going to do. After that, I can start thinking about what I want to put in my form. So if we look at the example I'm building right here, if we go back to my Nautilus design site, I want to bring in basically a label for first name and a last name and an email address, a phone, and some information as well. Now, if you note that there are different columns here, when I design a form, I think about just bringing in the elements first and designing second. To me, it's like, does the form function the way I want it to? Good, now I can design for it. So I wanna bring in the element, and then what I'm gonna do is, then we can move things around based upon the React Bootstrap framework to make it move or sit the way we want it to go. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring in the first form, and that's to bring in the first name. So inside of form, what I'm gonna do is, make sure I got the right cursor indented properly, is I wanna bring in a form group. Because to me, I don't want to bring just the form in, I want to bring in the label as well. Because labels are important for accessibility, it's hard to always put text just inside the form field. For a while that was super cool, but super cool doesn't mean super accessible. So for me, I'm really a big fan of bringing labels in. So from here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the form.group, hit return key. Inside of the form group, I have to give it some ID. So I have to say control ID, there it goes. We have to give it identification. Now don't forget IDs within anything in HTML are unique, they're by themselves. 
An old analogy I was given years ago was IDs are like a school ID. You have one of them. Classes can be used multiple times because you take multiple classes. So I'm gonna say form basic name for this one right here. As this is my first name, so actually I'll say first name in this design. I use camel case for this, so I use first letter lowercase and then the next letters after that I did uppercase. From here, I'm gonna say form.label and say first name. So the label goes first because it's gonna go on top. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say form control and from, oops, let's put that back where I should do control. There we go. And after form control, we have to identify what type of field this is. In this case, this type is just text, as so I'm just passing the first name into this field. I'm gonna say text, and if you wanna say something, you're welcome to say placeholder as well. So you can say, include your real first name. Just making that up, you probably should probably take that part out, but I did wanna also show this is the place where you can put your placeholder information if you need to. Now it is a single tag, so this one I'm gonna hit the slash and close it up. And if you want to, you can add form.text as well. So if you wanna add any additional information, here is where here is where it would go. So if we save this, let's take a look and see how it looks. Command S to save. Hopefully it's gonna rebuild it. We have no error messages and we're good to go. And oh, I thought I was in Chrome. Anyways, perfect. All it shows is first name, include your first name here and additional information here is where it would go. Notice how the text is bigger on the top. It also includes padding and it also creates this blue glow around the page. And by default, the actual field is a block level element and it stretches 100%. That's perfect, because we're gonna stylize that using the Gatsby container. And to me, we can take this piece out and include your real first name, because we don't really need that. But I just wanted to show you that we can have it if we want to, but for right now, let's just take it out. There we go, a little bit of cleanup. Save, and looks much better. First name and the form for the first name. That first name looking pretty good. Let's duplicate that and create a last name. So after this form group, let's add another one. I'm gonna say form group control ID equals form basic last name. And in here, if I close it up, I'm gonna create a form dot label and say last name. And from here, I will also add a form control. Form, I keep doing that, form dash control. Form dot control and say, oops, that's not gonna do that way. Come on, come back. Form control type and create text. That's a self-closing tag just like that. So I'm duplicating the effort from top down below. Now I have a first name and a last name. Eventually I do want these side by side, but my first thing is I wanna bring in all my fields first. So like I have on my website, I do have them in two columns, but if we go back to the actual page, it's just one column down. That's totally fine. I like to bring everything in first and then move things second, because if I know if it's working right away, then doing any extra design is just icing on the cake. So per my design, what I have is a first name, last name, an email address. If people wanna use the phone, they're, they're welcome to. So in here, I'm gonna close or hide Chrome. Let's hide Safari. So I'm gonna put in my phone, or do I have phone or email? Let's see, email address next, there we go. So let's create a form group. Form group, control ID equals form basic email, just to say this is the email address going in. And I will say form.label, and we'll say email address, 
And after that form label, you know what's coming up. Form dot control. I did not create the space on this one. And this one is going to be an email address. So we're going to say type email. Again, if you want to add a placeholder, you're welcome to. For me, it's pretty self-explanatory, so I don't really need that in this case. So now I have a first name, a last name, an email address. And I noticed that I also spelled group wrong. So I had a D in there. So if you typed that exactly like mine, do know that you I made a mistake. And there's the email address coming in. So great part about it is tab, 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 and shift tab goes up and tab goes down. So far, pretty good. We have the focus on whichever form we're in. What I also like about this design is it's got a nice little padding around the edges. I'm not worried about the edge of the browser. I'm gonna finish that within the container and the grid. So we have a first name, last name, email address. From here, what I'm gonna do is create one more form group when it comes to the phone number. Form group, control ID. Yes, you can probably basically copy and paste this and change it. I'm doing it the old school methodology of just typing it in for good practice. Form basic phone form dot label phone number optional. There we go. And the last one I'm going to put in when it comes to the basic fields is a form let's go capital form control now the type you might have heard could be tell and i did double check this it hasn't changed there is an input type of tell that is designed for phone numbers when i double check it the browser support does not support chrome ie slash edge which is the new version of internet explorer which please don't use stick with chrome and or safari firefox doesn't support it and opera which i don't know who the heck uses opera doesn't support it but safari does it's like the one random piece of it all so i don't use the type tell i still just keep this one as type text so i'd say type is text in here and i close it down like that. So once again, you're welcome to use the tell, but for me, I just use text when it comes to the phone number only because I'm just passing basic data. And if we double check that, let me close the HTML input type tell. And we have first name, last name, email address, and phone number. The last piece I want to bring in, of course, is the actual paragraph area or a text block where someone can type in some information. And this is where you'll probably want to add some placeholder text if you want to give your user some help on what to type in. So up until this point, we've basically used the type text. For the last piece we have to do is we have to use the text area. So we're still going to use the form groups. So let's say capital form group and control ID. Let's call this one form basic. We'll just call it, what are you looking for? Just because, well, I'm not gonna duplicate that ID for sure. So let's close that and bring it down. And always let's bring our form label in. So we'll say form label. And we will say, so in the form label, like we have here is that for me, I wrote, how can we help you online? So I'm just going to bring that one in just because I'm going to kind of model my one before. And we have to use a text area. Before, these are just one little line areas to type in the first name, the last name, email address, and phone number. This next one is going to say capital form control. And let's hit the return key. I'm going to bring it down twice and close the form control. This is just more for readability so we can see what the variables are that we're going to bring into form control. And before we had the type as text, now we're going to say form control as equals text area. So we're going to bring it as a text area, not the type text. Also in here, I have to say rows. I have to say how many rows by default are we going to put in this design? And I'm going to say three. If you want to add more, you can say 10, 15, 20. 
I don't go too far because then it feels like there's a cavernous amount of space to type. So for me, three rows just works pretty darn well. And if you want to give your audience or user some kind of guidance, you can always say placeholder, placeholder, <laughs> and say, what do you do? Or something like that. Just give some information to help the audience know what to type in. Forms and fields can be difficult. Let me save this in the process. And if you give someone some guidance, especially if it's just an empty box, it can help them go, oh, I know what you're talking about. No, oh, what did I do? What did I do? Let's see. Probably something. Oh, <laughs> I uh, hit the D again. Look at that. Power of persuasion. <laughs> that for some reason that D wants to show up all the time. So let's take a look. Refresh the page. Now we're good to go. Uh, if you're like me, don't type control uh, form grouped. Uh, it is just group, not the D at the end, which gave me the error message. Even professionals like myself can mess up on spelling. So this is line one, line two, and line three. And of course you can make it bigger by pulling it down on the page if you want that for your user as well. What I like about the React Bootstrap is out of the gate, it builds a pretty good looking form. So, so far we're so good, but we have to add that submit button because right now we haven't have a way for a user to actually submit the information. Now React Bootstrap has buttons built in. So I'm gonna come up to the top and add a button to React Bootstrap. And down below, keeping within the form, don't put it outside or it's not going to work properly. I'm going to say button and type is going to be a submit button. And here I will say submit this form, release the hounds. And if I save it, let's see if this thing works making sure there's no extra D inside a form group. So far, so good. Success, success, success. A nice big blue button, rollover works, submit this form, release the hounds. We're off to the races. So we have the form ready to go, but let's now build a grid in which to house the form. So let's head on back to our index and we're gonna bring in three more components in the React Bootstrap. We're gonna bring Mr. Container, because he's the almighty powerful one, and we'll bring in rows, and we'll bring in calls. So row and columns always work together, and container is the big guy that fits everything together. So what I wanna do is, I'm gonna build a container. So what I'm gonna do is, after this div, I'm gonna say container, and container, let me just make sure this is working by saying test. At any given time, it's, yep, it's gonna yell at me because I don't have the row or the call defined yet, which is totally fine. Come back here, test should be sitting right where I want it to be. So it should move, perfect. That's what I like about it. Awesome. So I'm gonna move the form. It's from form to form. And I'll cut the form and I'll put it inside of the container. Now note, it might not be spaced properly. That's fine. I'm just gonna hit Command and right bracket and indent it so the form sits inside the container. Let me save this, making sure I got rid of that test area. Save. And now, check it out. Now our form's looking a little better. Notice how it still goes full width, but it goes full width of the container, which has breakpoints. So if I move this smaller, smaller and smaller, my form is moving based upon the size of my container. That's awesome. So now what I wanna do is I wanna make a 50% container. I wanna have the left side, like I have my design, where I have, we look forward to working with you, fill out this form here or email me there. So we have a two column design. We have text on the right and a form on the left. So going by that design, what I'm gonna do is, up inside my container, I'm gonna build a row, and I'm gonna say call. Now I usually use the large breakpoint when it comes to columns. It's up to you how you wanna break your design, but I'm gonna say large equals six. 
And if you want to know more about how to build a grid, I have other videos about using React Bootstrap's grid, and I'll put a link to it in this video so you can see how to use it appropriately. So we have the call large six because it's based upon a 12 column design. And I'll have six and six. I'll say form goes here and additional text goes here. I just have some basic placeholders to make sure it works. So if I save this, this is how I build things. Perfect, form goes here, additional text goes here. Let's put the form inside this left-hand side. So where the form goes here information is where the form is gonna go. This is the great part about designing is that once I've got the form, I'm gonna let React Bootstrap take care of all the margins and padding, and I can just drop it in and make it fit. It's so great. And probably, yep, it is not indented properly. So I do have to do a little work of the call, the form, and in this case, the form group did not work appropriately. It always seems to have a little bit of an issue coming in. For me, if your VS code is magic and works great, well, you rock. I just don't always get that lucky. Great part about it is that I can just hit command right bracket to move left or right to making sure button, form, call are all appropriately indented so I can see if things are out of place. Let's save it and check it out. First name, last name, email address, phone number, additional text goes here. And our buddy Jeffrey is kind of my name for this guy sits right here. Awesome. But I want to make the first name and the last name sit side by side. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to build one more grid. There is a bit of grid involved here, but the great part about it is that it's going to break apart. So note how everything moves based upon the grid. Additional text went below the form or it sat side by side based upon the breakpoints. Again, I use large for my design a lot of times. If you want to use medium, you can add the MDs to these pieces right here. And just so you know, it will break at a different distance. So right there is our medium and here becomes our small. So if you do want to break at a different size, then go ahead and change the MD from LG. But I just like to use LG a lot of times. That's just kind of my de facto size for my columns. So we just have to fix the last one, which is the first name and the last name. And here I'm going to do is inside the form, I'm just going to add a row and call and repeat the pattern. Call LG six and then bring it down, copy paste. So I've got a 50% in a 50% design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the first name up to the first column and it doesn't always fit perfectly. Hey, there we go and there we go. And then what I'll do is for the second column, I'll bring in the last name and let's bring these up a little higher. Perfect. We'll drop it in. It doesn't fit. These guys need to go that way. Perfect. So now I have a six column and a six column, which is 50% and 50%. And now what I have going on, did I not save the page? Oh, I did to pause the video to see what I did wrong. And I did nothing wrong. I was a victim of my own success. Uh, the page broke because I was back down to the medium size. So if I go back, there it goes. It hits the large right off the bat. So now I have first name and last name in two columns. I could make the phone number smaller, but to be honest, for design wise, I like to keep it all pretty flush and consistent. And now I have first name, last name, email address, phone number, and how can I help you online with a big submit button right here, all within using the grid. And you can have your breakpoints where, like I did, it just dropped down to one column on the large. But again, if you want to hit your medium size and save, 
Now I'm going to bring it back down to two columns. So it's up to you how you want to break the different pieces. But the great part about it is we didn't do anything additional to our form. We let the grid take over. And that's the power of grid design is that everything breaks based upon the design inside of the grid. And now I have a one column. And then I also come back here for a two column, one column. And then I have my two column for additional text goes here. And you can design as much as you want after that, but this is how I built my grid using React Bootstrap and using the rows and columns for the grid inside of Gatsby JS. So those were just the basics of form design. If you want to go and put more additional pieces in, if you reference the React Bootstrap library of components and forms, it gives you additional options to choose from. You can have a select menu. You can have multiple selects by holding your command key down, at least on the Macintosh. Here's your text area as well. You can also change the sizing. So if I want to make it larger, in that form control, I can say size large. So let's say I want to make large text go on here. I can bring in that size large. And if I come back here, where'd it go? Form control, form control. Let's add a giant first name and a giant last name because I want to make sure people know that those are the most important forms in which to add. And now they are very, very big going on right here. Also note that the, form, that the phone number was optional, but the email address and everything else is not required. Well, that we have to put that inside our back end area. So if I go ahead and test this, and if I don't type any information into this, I hit submit this form, it in theory is gonna work fine. But I want to make sure that my user submits their information on a first name, last name, email address, and type something in. So I have to make them required. Well, the great part about is React Bootstrap makes this so easy. All I have to do is inside of form control, I'm going to say required. And this is going to make sure that this is always filled out before it's submitted. I can copy and paste this for my last name. For my email address is definitely going to be required. For the phone number, it is not required. And how can I help you online is going to be required. For usability, my thing is that I don't have to tell my user that these are required when this says optional. So it's going to tell me right off the bat that if I don't type something in, so if I try to submit this, I got to fill this form out. So here I am, Hayden. And if I do this, I got to fill this one out. So note now it's trying to tell me, hey, you got to finish this information and so forth and so forth and so forth. It's going to keep reminding me to say you got to fill this out, not this one, but this one as well. Something. And if I do that, it's going to, well, you need an email address. So it even knows that here are the error messages. So I will say something at something.com. And of course, filling this field out, I have to put something here. And now it's going to work. It's going to submit it to my form, wherever I want to put it, and it's going to work. So as an FYI, if you do want to require them, do put the word require inside of the form control. I really hope this has helped you build a basic form in Gatsby JS. Now you can use a myriad of different products from Form Spree to Netlify to where you want to submit this form. And that's also why I left the form element empties because I was focused more on the design elements inside of the form, not so much where the form goes off to. I'm curious, did this help you? Did you actually build a form inside of Gatsby using the React Bootstrap components? If so, I love a comment. If you thought this video was awesome, give it a thumbs up. And if you were loving these videos, I would love if you do subscribe and trying to build that subscriber base. Yes, I am begging for users at the very end. And once again, my name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes, and thank you so much for watching this tutorial.